Josh Felber. You're watching Making Bank on Advisor TV. As you become, as you try to get more and more successful, you have to be relentless in your pursuits. So anything you go after, whether it's your business, whether it's a, a new project, a new deal, whatever that may be, you have to be relentless for you to be successful. And way back from whenever I, uh, when I was a little kid, I remember that I've had this relentlessness built into me. It's ingrained in my DNA. And it's helped me pursue and drive and become successful in all areas of my life, whether that's owning over, four, uh, over 15 different companies since I was 14 years old, selling multiple businesses, as well as, you know, in my life with my family, with, you know, being able to have it have the lifestyle have that freedom and have that time that I want in my life and so for me being relentless has helped me achieve massive results massive actions in my life and that's part of being a high performer or a high achiever is being relentless and knowing that you can go after and having that determination to succeed and fulfill those dreams and fulfill those desires and wants that you have in your life. Some a couple things that I want to share with you today is the 10 laws of high achievers so you be, can become more relentless in your life uh, and, and achieve those successes and those dreams. So we're going to talk a little bit about those today. The very first thing that we want to talk about is everybody's got to understand in today's society, we, we're in a free market economy. That means anyone can go out there and make their mark in the world. They can go out, create their own success, and become successful in their life. And so you're not limited. And with the internet, it's just dramatically increased the odds and the opportunities available for you today. I know back everything that I have done since I was 14 years old, you know, just it is so much looks so much harder and to me you know just with the way the internet is today and the vast number of people that you're able to touch and connect with and create value for is just so much easier than it was 10 15 years ago and so number one is is that free economy and I want you to know that it's there for you to come out and take you go out and start creating value for others Number two is your background, your, your highest level of education is irrelevant when it comes to earning dollars. There's so many different entrepreneurs, so many different successful people out there that have gone out that have zero education, maybe a high school education, maybe didn't even graduate from high school, and they're made millions and billions of dollars because they don't let their education, they don't let their background, where they came from, if they grew up on the wrong side of the tracks, determine their success, what their earning potential is, their wealth, their, their attractiveness, and who they are. Number three, the fastest way for you to go out and make money is to solve a problem. The bigger the problem that you can solve, the more opportunity for you to make money there is. And so that could be for you, maybe it's a local community project. You know, maybe you see a huge problem in your community. And I know what you're thinking, like, Josh, you know, everything's been tried. Yeah, you know what, there, there's almost pretty much everything has been thought of, come up with, you know, products on the market, services, whatever that may be. But you can figure out a way to make it better. You can figure out a way to solve that problem better. You can figure out a way to make it more efficient with the technology, the opportunities, and everything that you have available for you today. Number four, you gotta stop listening to the naysayers and the haters. They're gonna tell you that life is, is supposed, you, it's gotta be a struggle. It, it's, you know, that you should settle down and that you should be grateful for what you have. You probably hear that all the time. 
you got to be grateful for what you have. Sure, gratitude is awesome, and there is a place for gratitude in what you have and knowing what you have. But you don't let gratitude stop you, and don't let gratitude let you settle. You want to always strive and push yourself to that next level of higher achievement, that next level of higher performance, whether it's through your courage, your energy, your clarity, your influence, or your productivity. We always want to keep continue to strive for those next higher levels in those different areas. And if we push ourselves in those different areas, those five different areas, right, we're going to help ourselves achieve that dream lifestyle where we want to go in life. Number five, expect to make more money. You, when you set your goals, you got to 10x your goals. You have to think big. You have to just dream and you have to set those out there. Such an audacious goal that you, your friends, your family may not think that you're going to be able to achieve this. And so by setting that bar so high, it's going to drive you. It's going to give you that relentless pursuit. It's going to push you to take action, to make those moves, and to go out there and get after it. So I'm sharing with you these five strategies today. Uh, if you like those other five strategies, you can download them from my website and you'll have the 10 laws of high achievers for higher performance. And so I'm so excited. Up next, I have Jeffrey Hazlett. He has a brand new book out, Think Big and Act Bigger, that's going to help transform your life and help you become more successful. So when we come back right after this, I'm excited to introduce Jeffrey to Making Bank. I am Josh Felber, and you're watching Making Bank, and we'll be right back. <music> I am Josh Felber. I'm excited today to have Jeffrey Hazlett on the on Skype with me and on Making Bank. Jeffrey is a host of C-Suite. He is a global business celebrity and primetime television show host on Bloomberg, and he's helped everybody from small to international small businesses to international corporations. His creativity and extraordinary entrepreneurial skills have enabled him to lead ventures, blending with his leadership, perspective insights into the C-suite and business strategy. Jeffrey is a leading business expert on Forbes, cited in Forbes, Success, Mashable, as well as Marketing Week and Chief Executive. He has commentary on Bloomberg, MSNBC, Fox Business, as well as appeared as a celebrity judge on NBC's Apprentice with Donald Trump. <laughs> That's awesome. Soon to be president, it looks like. That's, I uh, he's crushing it out <laughs> no, there. No, I man. don't know. But... <laughs> well, welcome, Jeffrey, to the show. I'm excited to have you. And hey, grab some awesome insights from you today for our audience. Well, it's awesome. I and mean, we're going to make some bank today, so I'm glad to be a part of this. So let's do it. For sure. Well, tell me a little bit about you know how you got started as an entrepreneur. You know, were you one of the kids that was just going out selling lemonade stands and newspapers door to door, or did you start Absolutely, later in life? Yeah, in fact, yeah. the first job I really remember was selling True Grit door to door. You won't even know what that was, but it was like sold for like twenty five cents for a subscription or something. Nice. And it was a magazine for young boys, basically. Okay. And I and and Boys Life. I sold Boys Life too. Okay. And so I did that, and then you know, and then I and by the way. And then I did all the contests uh, for Little League. We used to sell barbecue dinners. I grew up in Warner Robins, Georgia. Okay. And you sold barbecue dinners. That was the big fundraiser. And whoever sold the most won a baseball bat. And I used to win the first prize, the second prize, and the third prize. So it got oh, to be, you know, after a couple of years, the, the, the coaches used to come to me and say, Jeff, what do you want? And we'll just set that aside and let the other kids win the other prizes. That's because funny. I would go and sell everything. I used to sell these barbecue dinners door to door. I mean, <laughs> And, uh, well, who doesn't great. want a barbecue dinner? <laughs> exactly. Well, that's a big thing down south, so that was awesome to be able to sell it. And then, of course, you know, I you know I take my little brother with me, and 
and we just literally hit door to door and that's what we did yeah and then you know I did a lot of uh, you know small jobs when I was a kid and you know lawn cutting business you know normal sure. kind of stuff and yeah. I, I've just always been very involved in business and like to make money no that's awesome and you know what was uh, you know, I guess over the years now here you've owned how many different companies well, I bought and sold over 250 companies in my career, about yes. 25 billion in transactions. Wow. Uh, some of those I did own, not all of them sure. I owned. I can't remember the total number. I should probably add that up, the total <laughs> number of businesses I once owned myself. Um, but I did help, you know, as a corporate officer, you know, do billion dollar transactions, manage budgets, you know, of a, you know, and I have a 17 billion dollar company at the time. So, sure. you know, but I've run small businesses on Main Street and big businesses on Wall Street. Man, that's awesome. And, you know, what was one of the, I guess, biggest failures that you've encountered along the way? <laughs> well, the, I don't know. I haven't, Maybe got we'll... <laughs> got, I haven't got to a, the biggest one yet. I mean, I've done some big ones, right? I'm, look, look in, in business, every single day we fail. We fail. Sure. We win every single day, but we also fail. And you have to learn, you know, from those failures in order to get, you know, more success. And so, um, I, I, yeah, have I done big failures? Absolutely. I, I've gone out and done stuff and I figured out, you know, no one was going to show up. One of my biggest ones that's been recorded has been pheasant farming. I got into pheasant farming <laughs> at the corner of the market on pheasants until I figured out there wasn't one. Okay. So, you know, that's probably my biggest failure. Uh, but, you know, I've done campaigns that have, have just fallen flat, uh, sure. spent millions of dollars. Even though the, the research showed we did it right, the research showed we did it, and we screwed it up, and we messed it up. So, yeah, but the key thing is you got to remember as a business owner, as a business leader, as a right. marketer, you know, someone out selling every single day, no one's going to die. So if you make a mistake, you're not going to die. So unless you're operating heavy equipment, unless you're operating on people, <laughs> you're never going to die. So, so go out there and take some risk. There's nothing wrong with that. That's awesome. And, you know, I guess... I had first how'd you get into pheasant farming? <laughs> uh, well, that's a long story. I, you know, I, I you know, pheasants. I'm from South Dakota. That's our state. Park. Right. I, I love pheasants. I love to look at them. I love to see them. I love to get a gun, hunt them down, and kill them. I know that's probably <laughs> the most politically correct thing to say right now with all the stuff that's been going on with the lions and sure. everything else. I don't care. I eat the things I shoot. So, and it's a, it's a pastime, and it's it's part of our, our our livelihood and our life in South Dakota. It's one of the biggest cash crops there is, and that's the hunting and fishing that we have in our state, which is a, a, a massive business as part of our tourism. But you know, you know, we tried to provide pheasants, and I would try to smoke them, sell pheasants. You know, to people who I thought like smoke pheasants. You know, they only want them once a year. Yeah. Be, it's probably not to get a good thing to get into a business that only sells things once a year. That's right. Well, there you go. Awesome takeaway. Exactly. If you're in the business of just Christmas uh, sweaters, it's good for a couple of weeks. Right. Not, uh, it sucks. It sucks. It's the same thing with pheasant farming. Nice. That's awesome. So what... Um, what was one of the biz biggest successes that you had? I know you sold bought and sold companies and well, taken well, public. Well, you know, again, I would say I still haven't gotten to it yet, but I'm still <laughs> on it. Um, you know, every I've got lots of successes that we've done, and, and a lot of them are really small, and that's the ones that mean the most to me. I, I try to build things around three things. Okay. Well, build wealth for myself and my family because in the end that's what's important sure is to be able to to build wealth for your family and be able to pay the bills right yeah the second is I want to learn new things do new things and, and gain great knowledge sure. in terms of the activity and the third thing is you know I want to have fun <laughs> and those three things that I try to do and, and you know what it doesn't have to be huge money Right. You know, in terms of success, success can come in those other factors as well. Success can come in the fact that I could work from home and have a great family and enjoy myself. Or if that's what you do, I, I, my family wants to kick me out. So, you know, <laughs> get out because I know me, I wouldn't be married to me. So, right. you know, it, the biggest thing I can tell people is really around the principles of the new book that I've got out, which is called Think Big, Act Bigger. And there it is right there. Look at this gorgeous cover. Gorgeous cover. And that's a preview copy. So I know. That's what they said. I'm, still, I'm honored, man. <laughs> the hard copies are, are out there. And, of course, we're doing an audio book. And you can also buy a e book. But, you know, it's about being relentless. And that's what you have to learn to do. You know, people say, why, why isn't everyone successful? I'll tell you why. Because it's, it's, it's called hard work because it's hard. It's yes. hard. And, and that's what you need to know when you go into businesses every single day. Awesome, man. That was great. And one of the words that I've always utilized for myself since I was little was relentless. 
You Absolutely. have to be relentless. So can you hang- let, yeah, if I'm going to sell to you, you, sooner or later you're going to buy from me. <laughs> yes. If I have ten no's, twenty no's, I don't care. Sooner or later, I'm coming after you because I want to do that, and that's I'm going to put that on my bucket list. You know? That's right. All right, can you hang around for a minute? We got to just take can a quick hang break. All day, I got all day. I'm relentless, man. Awesome, buddy. I'm Josh Felber. You're watching Making Bank, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Back to Making Bank. I am Josh Felber. We're here with Jeff Hazlett. He's sharing how to be relentless. You're gonna continuously always buy from him, and uh, <laughs> well, you're gonna get value too. too. That's the there we go. Buy from people. You, you have, have to, to make, make sure, sure that you're giving great value. value. And if you're not sure. giving great value, what, what's, what's the use of doing it? I mean, then it becomes a commodity, and, and you don't want that. You want to be unique. You know, it's like I tell a lot of speakers, and even in, in any individual business. Look, we all have the same products that we get, the same services that we get, same people for the most part. The only thing that sets you different is your uniqueness, your ability to deliver the value. So really concentrate on value, and if people concentrate on value. Don't, it doesn't become a price discussion. Sure. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, that's one of the things I've always talked about is delivering value. Be obsessed, you know, with creating as much value for others that you can. And what was, for you, what was one of the most interesting or unique businesses that you had where you were able to deliver maximum value or high value to people? Well, well the, the biggest thing that we're working on right now is our C-suite network. network. So, so if you're in a business that's $10 million or greater, a uh, billion dollar business or mid cap business, and we are putting together services and a, a network for the most powerful business leaders in the world to be able to gather. And so we're doing conferences, and then we have C Suite TV, C Suite Radio, we have a C Suite Book Club. So all places for real leaders of businesses to gather. And that, those, you know, roughly 600,000 businesses that we're aimed at uh, in North America. And I think there's a lot more because there's 28 million businesses, but see, 27 million businesses are less than 10 million in size. And, and so 600,000 business, they control 95% of the spend, and that's where we spend our time. So that's where we spend most of the, the value in which we're trying to extract and give to them because they're the most powerful, the most strategic business leaders in the world. No, that's awesome. And, you know, that's, you know, one of the areas that we try to focus on, you know, is, is that business owner out there hustling every day being relentless, you know, taking action to move the business forward and create value for others as well. So um, share a moment kind of when you knew you were on to something big, um, but it just didn't, wasn't just a dream in your head anymore and it just exploded into that reality for you. Well, oh, doing, doing that right, right now with C-Suite Television. I mean, okay. when I was doing broadcast uh, at Bloomberg, you know, we had a primetime business show. It was the number one primetime business show in the world, business show in the world. And so we were, and we were being seen, you know, foreign countries all over the place. People wow, call me from sure. China. People are calling me from Japan saying, hey, I'm watching you on television. You know, I'm even seen on United Airlines. So, so our shows were doing really great, but we started to really see pickup online. And the third show in, we started seeing more people watching us online than were watching us by broadcast. Oh, wow. And so that told us we had something. So what we did was we decided at that moment to migrate to online. And that's what right. we did. We created C-Suite TV. And today we have five television shows that people could come and watch for free. You know, because when was the last time you rushed home to watch a primetime show? <laughs> right. Uh, when was the last time you watched, ran home to watch a primetime business show? Never happened. Sure. Never will happen. <laughs> I would love that that was the case, but everybody was t bowing me. Everybody was DVRing me. So, so that wasn't happening. But yeah, they were going to their tablets. They were going to their phones. They were watching the show. So we decided to move all of our shows online and feed it up to you when you want it. Cool. Just like a great wine, just like a great a great scotch. <laughs> we're there when you want it, and that's what we're there for. And and so that's when we're seeing that that great push. So C Suite TV. Awesome. And then what, you know, what's kind of the focus with C-Suite TV that you guys are really targeting in on? Making money. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, making, I mean, so making money. Nice. It, guess what? More viewers, it gets great content. Great content gets more viewers and the results you, you get to make money with it. So that's what we're doing and, and, we're, and we're trying to solve problems. I mean, we're trying sure. to give people compelling content. 
you, you're not going to watch the the, the, the blow-by-blow blow of what's going on in the marketplace. I, right. Look, you, you want your stock, you watch your stock, you get a stock indicator, you get that, you know, it, it's beeping, you're telling me it's up or it's down. What we want to know is, what did you do right? So I have compelling interviews with the, the CEO of the, the, the Boston Celtics, which has more social media followers than any other pro team in history of sports. Sure. Why? Yeah. Um, I get to sit down with Nolan Bushnell, the founder of Atari, the founder of Atari, yeah. the, the one guy who, who, first, who was the first person to ever hire Steve Jobs, and by the way, passed on investing $50,000 in Apple, which would have oh, would, wow. built, you know, which is <laughs> one of the stupidest business decisions he's ever made in his life. Sure. But, but you know, and, and to talk to, you know, find out why did he start Chuck E. Cheese? Right. Here's a game show, a, a game, a gaming company CEO that started Chuck E. Cheese. Well, he started it to build his future market of people who wanted to play games. Play video games, yeah. Brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. So what we're doing is sitting down with those people, and on my CBS show, which I have a CBS podcast called All Business with Jeffrey Hazlett, brought to you by Fortinet. And I worked. How'd you like the way I worked? Out? <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. And, there. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and um, and so I sit down with Pierce Morgan. I sit down with Gene Simmons. I sit down with the, the CEO of California Pizza Kitchens, the CEO of Bennigan's, the CEO of KOA Campgrounds, and big businesses. And I sit down yeah. and talk to them about how they're doing it and what what did they what do they do right? What do they do wrong? How do you motivate employees and and so just stuff that I think people like to hear. No, that's awesome. That's some great content. It sounds like, you know, you guys are delivering out there um, as well. So what, um, what was the best, pi best piece of advice you've ever received? Well, I think the biggest thing is, is to truly sit down and listen. Yep. You know, that's, I find great leaders listen. And they, they, they hear things that most other people don't hear, and, and they're very pinpointed when they hear it, and they can just focus in on it. And then it becomes focused, you know, in terms of being able to focus. But the best piece of advice was just listen. You know, shut up. You don't have all the answers. Shut up. And I'm, I've had a couple of people who've told me that in meetings, shut up. Like, you know, because I get excited. You sure. Know, and I'm not just because I have like eight, es eight espressos a day. I get excited because I am excited and I like that. And I love the thrill of doing whatever it is. Right. And, you know, and if I, you know, if you told me today, hey, there's a contest, you want to go, you know, make some money selling barbecue door to door, I'd do that again. I'd do it again because I love doing it. I love doing it. Awesome. So can you remember a specific moment in your life when you, you know, you, it, going back to our failure for a minute, when uh, you just didn't think maybe something was going to work out and you're just you know there, what was that specific turning point for you? Well, I mean, there's a lot of signs that tell you those kinds of things specifically. And I can sit there in Kodak and I knew very quickly at Kodak we weren't going to do the things we could do. I, I wanted to and I sure. tried staying there for as long as I could and finally after four years had to leave. But, you know... Um, just because you, you get a sense of what the atmosphere or the mood is. And mood's a very important thing. People talk about culture. Culture's something right. that develops over a long time. But if the mood is bad, if the mood is bad in your business, you can't succeed. Nothing you can do. True, no yeah. matter how the great the product is, no how great the, the service is. I mean, how many times have you been in a, at a great restaurant, unbelievable food, and the mood is bad, the waitresses and waiters hate it, and, yeah. and, and, and it spills over? Or how about you that you have a you know and you've been in a crappy restaurant but the mood is great right and you go back because you <laughs> love the people and you love the atmosphere you know even though it's really shitty food um but you just love it and so that's really you know that's that's the one thing that you really want to be listening for and watching and seeing what the mood if people are trying to jump out of the business at 10 minutes to five and get home and they don't want to stay there late yeah something's not Might right not be good something's not right yeah it makes sense for sure what uh, you know? Let's you know. Maybe grab three pieces of the you know best success strategies that you've come across since you're interviewing all these different CEOs and everything that you know the entrepreneurial folks that listen to Making Bank you know can take and utilize. Look, there's no real secrets to this business, right? <laughs> so in any business, though, whether you're on Main Street, you know, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, or you're on Wall Street, it's the same thing. Sure. So what do you want to do? You want to hire right. So spend a lot of time hiring the right people, right. surrounding yourself with the very best, and people who are better at it than you are. Second is find the things that you do right and the things that you don't do right, and get somebody else to do the things you don't do right. From my from my business, I have an, a guy who is the exact opposite of me. Okay, <laughs> sure. I'm the good looking one. He's not the sort of. <laughs> I'm the smart one. Though. He, he, he is the detail guy. I'm not a detail guy. Can't right. stand it. Don't like it. He's the yin to my yang. 
and, awesome. and then and then the third time the third thing is when you know it's not right act on it now yeah. move quick you know what's not right in your gut don't wait around for all the statistics to show you that you know if someone's not working out you know tell them you love them but you're going to miss them sure. okay? and, and, yeah. and make those things happen those those are real simple those are three quick ones for you no those are awesome you know is you know you know hiring right yep you know finding the strengths as well as in hiring the right people to pick up your weaknesses. Exactly. So the balances, you got to have the balance. Definitely. If you don't have the balance as an entrepreneur, you'll override. Because I'm a very powerful kind of guy. I know that. Right. I mean, I'm six foot three, 200 and some pounds. <laughs> just, just size alone. And then not, you take that with the personality and everything else. I, as you can see, I'm yes. in your face, you know. And so, you know, you need somebody to balance that and say, well, what Jeff really meant. <laughs> yeah, is this? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. He's not towering over you. Yeah. Well, I'm still going to do that. Right. Well, yeah. yeah, people <laughs> complain like, and it's cold in the office. Work harder. That's what I said. <laughs> That's <Work>. yeah. <laughs> and then act on it if it's not right, man. Oof. So, yeah. Do it. Yeah. Cut, and cut loose. And by the way, and you'll make forward. some mistakes, but no one's going to die. Move on. That's right. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate your time today, and I know you're a busy guy, and you got more stuff to rock out. And yep. don't forget the book, Think Big, Act Bigger. There it is. This is the preview. Oh, hey. Here we go. But by the time you're watching this, you're going to be seeing the real stuff. Get it. Look, gorgeous guy, gorgeous cover. Unbelievable. It's everywhere. Bestseller. It's going to be a bestseller right now. Go get his book. It'll change your life. It'll change how you view business. Think Big, Act Bigger. That's right. Think Big, Act Bigger. No, it was an honor to have you on today, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks for your time and appreciate you being on Making Bank. Okay, let's go make some. I gotta go. I gotta make more bank. That's right. Hey, I got a lot of things to pay for. What's one device you can't live without? One device? Yeah. That's gotta be your phone. Come on. There's nothing. <laughs> Everybody says that now these days. You, you know where your phone is, more you know where your children are. Okay? That's right. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thanks for watching Making Bank. I am Josh Felber. Making Bank is also available for download on iTunes and Stitcher.